Welcome back. In the previous segment, we talked about the call to action. In this segment, I'm going to talk about what I call the right hook. I actually didn't come up with this term. I, I stole it from one of my favorite contemporary preachers, Louis Giglio. He talks about the importance of having a right hook in your preaching. Now, this is going to sound a little bit counterintuitive because the right hook actually comes before the call to action. We're going to be asking, why did you talk about the call to action before the right hook? And that's because the right hook must be developed with the call to action in mind. You want to develop your call to action and then ask yourself, what is the right hook that I would give right before the call to action? The right hook is some impactful element, something that you would say or do that would drive home the main point and then lead into the call to action. If you're not familiar, in boxing, the right hook is the famous knockout punch. A boxer is jabbing, jabbing, jabbing. He, he's wearing you down. He's getting you exhausted. And then he, he lands a few crosses, and you're ready to be knocked out. You're exhausted. And then the boxer goes for the, for the knockout punch, the right hook. And you're knocked out. You're down for the count. That is, in essence, what we want to do. But we're not trying to knock out our people. What we're trying to knock out is the objections or the obstacles between them and God. What is it in their heart and mind that, that comes up that I want to knock out? And I want to find something, some element, something I can do to kind of grab people's heart to drive home the point. Obviously, some of the best ways to do this is with stories, with illustrations, with metaphors, with quotes, with video clips. Sometimes you can do this very effectively. When I was a youth pastor, I would do this frequently. My right hook would be the lyrics of a popular song. I remember preaching on the, the new heart. When I was going through John chapter 3, talking about how Jesus causes us to be born again, and he gives us a new heart. And I quoted from the lyrics of actually a song from a popular hip-hop artist that I knew a lot of the students in my youth group listened to on a regular basis. And the reason why I quoted from this particular hip-hop artist's song was because his lyrics were really powerful, and they, were, they, were, they, they gave him the ability to kind of drive home the point I was making. I also knew that every time they hear that song, they would think about my sermon. And months later, I'd have students saying to me, Kenny, every time that song comes on the radio, I think about that sermon that you preached. I also love to use elements of pop culture. I, I love doing things like using movie clips or, or moments from movies. Again, because I know that, that, that people are going to watch those movies and be reminded of the lessons that I taught them that day. What I want to do is I want to, to do something at the end of my sermon that basically drives home my main point in a really powerful way. Uh, lyrics of songs, poems, quotes, testimonies. In fact, sometimes I've even done this where I've called someone up from the audience and have them give a, a one-minute testimony, giving their own personal story of what God has done in their life because I knew it would drive home the point. The goal of the right hook is not to teach new content, but it's to take the, the clear main point from your sermon that you've already driven home and now simply drive it home in a, in a powerful, tangible way, in a way that's going to make people go, wow. And then you finish with the call to action. You give them the right hook, and then you call them to do the thing you've called them to do. Find some awesome thing to do that is unique, that is creative, that is powerful, that is heart-wrenching, tear-jerking. Do something that punches people in the gut. Metaphorically speaking, of course. You want people walking away having got hit with the right hook. It's a thing they'll talk about years to come. In the next segment, I'm going to talk about the very last thing you do in your sermon prep, and that is writing your introduction.